Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a box mock-up in Photoshop. If you've ever visited my website, anthonymorganti.com, you'll notice that I use box mock-ups for all of the products that I sell. Within the next few days, I'm going to be coming out with a new course on Lightroom. Now, the new course isn't on Lightroom Classic. You can see I already have a course on that. The new course is on what many call the cloud version of Lightroom or Lightroom Desktop and I need to create a box for it. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You could download this video so you could work along at home. Also, you could download a box so that you could use your own image and create a box mockup uh, for yourself. One caveat though, I use this specific box for my website and I'm going to be using it in this video because I want all of the boxes to look consistent on my website. This is an Adobe stock file, so it's not mine to give away. So instead of getting this file, I'll be giving you this file. It's a box just like the other box. It's just one that I created and I can give this one away. So you'll download this box. You could use one of your own images and you could follow along in this video and do what I'm doing to create a product on a box. Now, what we're going to do is I have the box. I also have this photo that I took. We're going to put this photo on the box. And I also have a Lightroom logo. I want to have the Lightroom logo on the box as well. So we're going to start out with the actual image. Because the box is a vertical box and my image is a horizontal image, it really won't fit right. So what I need to do is I need to use generative AI to add to the canvas of this image so that it will better fit on the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command minus a couple times on my Mac. It's Control minus on a PC, just so that it's a little smaller. Then I'm going to go over to the Crop tool, and I'm going to keep the 3 to 2 ratio, and I'm going to go to this um, drop-down right here, and I want to use Generative Expand. And then I'm going to grab this right-hand corner, and I need to pull it up. I want a lot of blank space on the right, because I want to put uh, the course name on the right along with my name. So I just pulled out from the right, and I'm going to click the check mark, and it's going to use Generative AI to fill in those blank areas, and it's going to give me three variations. And I'll just choose the best variation. So the box will be still vertical. The bird will be towards the left front of the box. This part on the far left of the image will fold around the, the side of the box, like over here. And then over here, I'll put the name of the course and my name down here. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I like this first variation. There's the second variation. And there's the third. Let's just go with that first one. That looks pretty good to me. Now, what we need to do is flatten the uh, layers. So make sure you pick the the version that you want right and then we're going to go up to layer and then down to flatten image so that we have a single background layer now now we need to select everything here to do that hit command or control a on your keyboard to select everything we need to copy it now to the clipboard hit command or control c so typical controls nothing special there so now we have the chickadee image copied to the clipboard now we're going to go to our box and the box we don't have to do anything with. And the box I give you, you won't have to do anything with. At this point right now, we're going to go to the tool we need in order to put the photo on the box realistically. To do that, we're going to go up to Filter and then down to Vanishing Point. You'll be in the Vanishing Point uh, workspace now. And over here on the left, you have a number of different tools. You want to use this tool that looks like a grid. This is the Create Plane tool. We're going to use this tool to define, define the face of the box and the side of the box. And to do that, with the tool active, just find the first corner. We're going to do the face first. And if you can't see very well, you could hold in the X key and it will zoom in for you. So that might help. You just have to hold in the X key on your keyboard. I don't need to do that here. I could see it okay. I got a pretty big screen. So I'm just going to click once there. And once you click once, you'll be drawing out a line. Go to another corner. I'm going to go to the corner over here. Click again. Go down here. And click again. 
then go over here. And again, you could hold the X key in. It might help you better see where you're putting the actual click. And then when you let go like that. All right, so we have the front plane defined. Now we need to do this side plane. Now you have handles here. You can't just click and drag out. It won't look. See how it's just dragging out kind of straight. We're going to undo that by hitting Command or Control Z on my computer. What you need to do is hold in the Command or Control key in. While holding that key and then draw this out, and you'll see now how it's conforming to that side panel. Bring it right to the edge. Keep holding in that Command or Control key. Then go up here with the Command or Control key uh, held in, and then fix this corner. And then go down here and fix this corner. All right. All right, now we have that side panel defined. Now click on the front panel again. All right, so far so good. Now we need to paste what we have on the clipboard here. Remember we copied the chickadee photo to the clipboard. To paste, hit Command or Control V. Now because the chickadee image is much bigger, higher resolution than the box, you could see what it did. But we could fix this. Hit Command or Control minus a couple times until you could see the entire outline of the chickadee. In this case, it's ch chickadee. When you download the video in the box, you're going to use your own image. So just so you could see your entire image frame here. Then hit Command or Control T to go into transform mode. Now, the thing is, if you just grab a handle, you could you could screw it up. Like you could screw up the, um, the dimensions and you could distort whatever is in the image. So to keep your dimensions, what you need to do is hold in the shift key. The thing is, though, it only works with the corner handles. So if I hold in the shift key and I grab this handle, I could still distort things. But if I hold in the shift key and, and grab this corner handle here, you can see how it looks pretty decent. All right, just bring it right about there. Then just kind of now move it, and you can see how now it's conforming to the image. Now I'm going to move it this way and up a little bit. And by the way, now you could fit this to screen by hitting Command or Control Zero, and then you could still move it around. I kind of like that. So that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is eventually, it takes a few more steps, but we're going to put Lightroom up here, and then I'm going to put um, another part of the title below it, and then down here, probably going to put my name. Uh, down here and then over here I'm going to put the Lightroom logo. So I kind of like the way it is. I like the way it's positioned. Make sure you have it perfect because you, you know you want it perfect right now. Click OK. Now you'll see we are back here and we have it the way we want it. Now what I want to do is put the title, the just Lightroom and below that the rest of it is the easy way. So it's the name of the course is Lightroom the easy way. But I want to start out with Lightroom. So we're going to get the type tool. Hit the T key on your keyboard for the type tool. It's right here. And you could go up here and click a font that you want. I'm going to use Arial Black Regular. And then I want to paint in white. So I'm going to make sure it's in white. And I'll put it centered. And I'm just going to click right here. And I'm going to type Lightroom. Now, I'm going to click the check mark. It's not obviously what I want yet, but I'm going to click the check mark because I have over here a character panel. Um, this is my the way I have my workspace set up because I often use type and I like to use the character panel as opposed to the adjustments up here. It's a lot easier with the character panel. So to see the character panel, go up to window and then down here, make sure that you click on character and it has a check mark next to it. All right. So from here now, I could go to size and I could just use the scrubby slider by just going on the T and you'll see how the cursor turns into a hand. That's called a scrubby slider. And I could click with the left mouse button and drag to the right to make it bigger. Drag to left to make it smaller. Now I am on the move tool. The keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. By the way, on my website, I have a full list of all of the keyboard shortcuts found in Photoshop. It's free. It's a PDF that you could download and print at home. Again, that'll be linked in the description below this video. So we're going to make it a little bigger, like that. Now, see how it doesn't look right? Uh, because 
the box is kind of tilted to the side a little bit, and that's what we're going to be fixing. So don't worry about that. I'm going to make it a little bigger like that. And then I am going to uh, give it an effect. I'm going to give it a shadow. So I'm going to go down here to FX and do a drop shadow. And I want a tight drop shadow. So I'm going to bring distance in, size in, just kind of give it a little more depth like this. And I think I want it going this way because it looks like the chickadee's lit from the left. So we'll leave it like that. So that looks pretty good. All right. So we have Lightroom. Obviously, it doesn't look right. What we need to do now is we need to rasterize this layer. To do that, just right-click right on it and go down to Rasterize Type. Now we need to rasterize the layer style. That's the shadow. Right-click right on the image and go down here to Rasterize Layer Style. Now you'll notice it's just a normal layer. It's no longer a type layer. Now we need to copy all of this to the clipboard. Do the again, hit Commander Control A, then Commander Control C, so it's copied to the clipboard. Turn that layer off. Click on the background layer, then go back up to Filter, and then down to Vanishing Point. And you'll notice that our grid is still there. So we don't have to do that again. Just hit Commander Control V to paste it to the clipboard. Then click and drag it to where you want it. You could resize it by hitting Commander Control T and you could grab a handle. Again, if you grab like a handle here, you could distort it. You don't want to do that. If it'll only work on the corner handles if you hold the shift key in if you want to resize it. So Lightroom, that's good. And I'm going to click OK. Now I need some more type. I need to put um Underneath Lightroom, I need to put the easy way. So we're going to get the type tool again by hitting the T key. I'm going to get a different font. I'm going to try this Founders one right here, I think. So we'll click here, and we're just going to type the easy way. All right. We're going to click the little check mark. And because I have the character panel here, I could come in and resize this and make it smaller. And get the move tool and move it this way a little bit. And again, with this, I'm going to add a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to go up to the F or down to the FX down here and click on drop shadow. And I think I'll bring it a little bit closer like that. A little bit like that. That's good. So. So far, so good. Now we need to rasterize the type. To do that, right-click, go down to Rasterize Type. Then we need to rasterize the layer style. Again, right-click and go to Rasterize Layer Style. That's the shadow. Then we need to select all of it by hitting Command or Control A, then Command or Control C to copy it to the clipboard, then turn it off, click on the background layer, then go up to Filter, Vanishing point, hit Commander Control V. It always puts it up in the corner. Drag it down here and put it where you want it. Again, you could resize it if you need to by hitting Commander Control T, but I think I like it exactly like that. We're going to click OK. Now, I need to put my name down here. So we're going to get the type tool again by hitting the T key. I think I'll use the same font. We'll try it at least. And I'm going to click down here. And actually, I want this left aligned. And I'm going to put by, maybe in lowercase, and then my name. Okay, I'll click the little chuck mark. Again, I have the character. Uh, I'm going to go to the Move Tool too. And we'll go to the Character Panel. And I'm going to make this smaller. And I need some more uh, space between the lines. So I'll go to this uh, tool right here. Again, I'm using the scrubby slider. And put this up over in here. Now we're going to give this a bit of a drop shadow as well. So we'll go down to Effects, click on Drop Shadow. And maybe make the distance a little less, the size a little... A little more like that, maybe a little 
opacity. That's good. Now we need to rasterize the type by right-clicking on the type and then going down to rasterize type. Then we need to rasterize the shadow by right-clicking and going down to rasterize layers style. Now we need to select everything by hitting Command or Control A, copy it to the clipboard by hitting Command or Control C, and then we're going to then turn this layer off, click on our background layer, go back up to Filter, Vanishing Point, hit Command or Control V, and then drag it to where it needs to be. And then we need to resize this. It's a little too big. I'm going to hit Command or Control T. I'm going to grab from a corner and hold in the Shift key so that I'm not distorting it. Maybe put it right there. All right, and then we're going to click OK. Now, the last thing we need to do is put the logo of Lightroom over in that left-hand corner. So I have it right here. I'm going to select all of this by hitting Command or Control A, copy it to the clipboard by hitting Command or Control C. Then we're going to go back to our box, make sure we're on that box layer. By the way, you could throw, all, throw away all these uh, text layers Take them down here to the garbage. You don't need to hold on to them since they're already here. Now we need to go to this background layer and go up to Filter and then down to Vanishing Point. Hit Command or Control V to paste it. Now we need to hit Command or Control T to resize it. Hold in the Shift key, grab from a corner, resize it, and then pull it over here like that. And we're going to pull it out a little bit. Now, sometimes I notice with the logos, they kind of look funny on the side. They look, so you could distort this maybe a little bit. So putting that logo there uh, lets people know that this is for the so-called cloud version of Lightroom and not Lightroom Classic. I could put it over here too. I contemplated that when I was thinking, imagining how I was going to do this box but I think I'll put it on the end there. And I like it right there. We'll click OK. Now we have it. Now, one thing you'll notice is the left side of the box uh, should have a shadow on it because the box is casting a slight shadow here. And the actual box mock-up, the blank box, did have a shadow there. But when we put our image on it, it covers up the shadow. So I like to take care of that. So you'll notice we have a selection going around here where you see the marching ants. Get rid of that selection by hitting uh, Command or Control D to deselect. Not sure why that selection was there. But we're going to go to a lasso tool. Uh, so we're going to go to specifically the polygonal lasso tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to click once in a corner, like right here. And then it draws out a line. And we'll go, and we're just going to do this side panel. So go and click all the way around the side panel. Like this, and like this. All right, so I have this uh, selection now. Now I need to feather it a little bit. So I'm going to go up to Select, then down to Modify, and then down to Feather. And you can do like three to five pixels. I'll do five, and make sure that effect, Apply Effect to Canvas Bounds is checked, and click OK. Now we have this selection. I need to just basically darken down this side panel a little bit. I'll just go to the brightness contrast adjustment layer. And because I have a selection, it will automatically apply a mask so that it will only affect that side panel. Let's see what it's doing. Just like that. You can mess around with contrast. You don't have to use this. You could use levels. You could use layers or curves. You could use exposure. I'm just going to use the brightness contrast. It's easy. It's one slider. And there is my box. Now I could flatten this out. Um, if you want to, you could go down to Layer, Flatten Image, and there's our box. And that's the box I'll have on my website when the course is live. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You'll be able to download this video, this exact video you're watching right now, so that you can work along at home. And you'll be able to download this box so that you could try this yourself and see how you could do uh, with one of your own images. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.